all of you once again to the first day of OSI days. Let us start with our very first session by Mr. Anthony Rees, who is a member of the HP Helium Cloud team based in Melbourne, Australia, with a background in agile application development. He is talking on change the game with Helium, transform your business with DevOps and open hybrid clouds. So let's hear it from Mr. Rees. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Sorry about that. Bit of feedback. Uh, it's great to be back uh, in India again. It's been a couple of years since I've been here, so uh, very excited to be back. And today uh, I'll be talking to you mostly about, about DevOps uh, and also uh, we'll be touching on a lot of HP Helion's uh, new cloud stack which can help you out uh, in terms of being able to transform your business and be able to utilize DevOps, Agile, Lean, and Kanban type methodologies to be able to push your applications out faster. So I thought I'd just um, set a level playing field uh, just to begin with and just make sure that we're all talking about the same thing here. And I always like to, to level that playing field by making sure that we're all talking about cloud in the, in the same manner. So I'll just spend one moment just to, just to cover that off. But when you're thinking about cloud and when you're talking about cloud, I want you to think about it in terms of a service delivery model. Okay, I always want you to think about it in terms of service delivery and in terms of I want. I want to be able to consume something. And when you start to think like that, you're starting to think about self-service, marketplace portals, and APIs. I've got an application development background, and so I'm always thinking in terms of APIs. I want to be able to get compute on demand when I want it, or storage on demand when I want that. I want infrastructure as a service. I want platform as a service. I want to be able to offer my products as software as a service. And when you st start to think about cloud in that particular way, you're moving towards that hybrid cloud model that HP is visioning. You want to make sure that all of your cloud environments have full service and application lifecycle management. Okay, you want to make sure that when you're standing up, when you're instantiating, and you're thinking about all of the attributes you want to add into platform as a service, you also need to make sure that when you're tearing them back down again, that that lifecycle management is looking after that for you. If you have monitoring on that particular cloud, you want to make sure that you turn it off when you de-instantiate that particular instance. You also want to make sure that you're metering, uh, you, you understand the billing and the cost aspects of it as well. Okay? Cloud can be expensive depending on, which, on the way that you're utilizing it. So make sure that when you're, when you're looking at a cloud solution for yourself, that you take into account all of those particular attributes. It's very, very important that you understand why you want to move to the cloud and that you have an open and hybrid approach to moving towards the cloud. So I always like to start off my, my talks with a quick survey. And that survey always involves my audience. So I love audience participation. I come from an agile background. So I'm going to ask you all to stand up for a moment for me. Can everyone just stand up for one moment for me, please? And I want you to have a think about this question. Have you had a conversation on cloud in the past week? If you have had a conversation on cloud in the past week, please sit down for me. So that's probably about 50%, bit over 50%, maybe 60% of the audience has had a conversation on cloud in the past seven days. That's good, but I want you, everyone who's standing up here, I want you to take away some of the, the fantastic information which has been spread out there by all of the different vendors and uh, open source groups. And I want you to go back over the next seven days and have a conversation at your workplace about cloud and why you want to be able to move towards it. So thanks everyone for that quick survey. Please feel free to sit down now. And I'm hoping that next time I come back and, and visit you all here, that 
no one is left standing, that everyone's had that conversation on cloud, because it is, it's so important to do it and to do it now, because if you're not thinking about it, your competitors are thinking about it. And that is the important differentiator. So let's touch on OpenStack really quickly. We'll spend about five minutes just having a look at, uh, at OpenStack, HP's involvement, why we got involved. And that'll help you to better understand the model of hybrid and also in terms of how you can utilize it from the perspective of DevOps, Agile, Lean, Kanban, and all of those fantastic practices that are out there at the moment. Uh, so for those of you that are, are familiar with OpenStack, uh, you will know that uh, the Swift project and the Nova project were the first ones that were kicked off. Uh, so Rackspace kicked off Swift and Nova was kicked off uh, by NASA. And of course that was then passed over back, uh, back into the open source community. It was made a, made a community set of projects and of course OpenStack was born when more of the core components were brought together, uh, including Keystone for identity, Swift for uh, storage, and Glance for your image repositories, okay? And when all of those different projects came together, we started to see the OpenStack set of projects that we're more familiar with today. It took a little bit of time, but the main thing was that it's, it's been donated back to the community. And there's a lot of big vendors, HP being one of them, which has come on board that OpenStack journey. Now, every one of the releases, and you'll hear people talk about the different releases, uh, but every one of the releases is named after uh, one of the cities where, uh, where the, the release summit has taken place. Okay, so it starts off with, um, with Austin, moves, moves through to Diablo, then through to Grizzly, and HP got involved uh, roughly around about the time of, of Grizzly. So we've been involved now for about two years. That's in, that involvement is really important because it means that we've been, we've been part of that community uh, utilizing it in anger for two years. So just to touch on the different projects here, because I want to make sure that when you're going and uh, you're listening to all of the different HP speakers and the speakers from, other, from the other vendors and the other groups out there, that you do understand the, those projects just briefly. So when you hear people talk about the Horizon uh, dashboard, so that portal is the main graphical user interface for utilizing OpenStack. Uh, compute is done by Nova, okay? And as I touched on before, that was one of the first projects that were created. Each one of these is a project in its own right, okay? And block storage is done by Cinder. Swift is object storage. A lot of talk out there in the, uh, out, out there in the, in the marketplace at the moment around Swift. Uh, if you're not looking at Swift or you haven't played with Swift in terms of object storage, get on board. <laughs> a lot of enterprises are looking to be able to do uh, secure Dropboxes, okay, and they're going to be looking to leverage solutions like Swift, okay, big, big market play out there. Uh, your organization should definitely be thinking about how you can leverage things like Swift. Uh, all of your images are stored in, in the Glance repository, okay, so it's a very, very important uh, part of it. Keystone for your identity, okay, and orchestration is heat. Does everyone know why they call Orchestration being heat, because to create a cloud, you need heat, okay? That's where it comes from. Uh, and of course, network for, for neutro is, is neutron, right? Very important part of the, of the networking side. Um, so hopefully now when you hear the different projects, you'll be able to place them and know where they fit within. This is not by any, any, any means uh, fully comprehensive. In the new versions of, of Juno, there's a lot more projects than just this, but I wanted to touch on some of the main ones for you, just so that you have a, a clear understanding of them and you can place them. Now, just to finish off this particular section on, on OpenStack, so HP's involvement in OpenStack has come from its background with hpcloud.com, okay? hpcloud.com, uh, which is one of the uh, one of the videos there running in the background showing you, showing you 
It's a productionized system which runs HP's cloud environment. It's been running for two years. All of the learnings that we got out of that, we've pushed that back into the OpenStack community. That's what, what it really means to be part of the, an open source community. And that means that it's put HP to the top of the list at the moment. Um, if you go and check out Stackalytics for the Juno release, HP was the number one contributor there. Now, if you haven't had a chance to play with, with OpenStack or you are curious to be able to do that, uh, if you go and log on to hpcloud.com um, right now, uh, you'll be able to get a $300 US credit to be able to go and play with it. Gives you roughly about three months uh, to be able to go and play with that particular platform. Uh, and although it is running an older version of, of OpenStack, it's an excellent way for you to be able to get familiar with it before going and, and, uh, and utilizing one of our community versions or even our GA version. So let's talk about another project which I haven't mentioned so far, which is Triple O. So what's Triple O? Triple O is a project within OpenStack that HP has been instrumental in developing. And it allows you to be able to install it, manage it, and upgrade it easily. It saves you from having to use other languages to be able to manage the upgrading of it or the installation of it. You don't have to go out and learn Puppet or Chef or uh, another programming language, you can actually use OpenStack. So triple O is OpenStack on OpenStack. It makes it extremely easy for you to be able to install it, especially if you've never done that before. So how does it go about doing it? Now, there's going to be uh, other sessions over the next two days about triple O, so I'm not going to go into it in too much detail, or otherwise feel free to come and have a chat to me offline. Um, I'm here today and tomorrow. But Essentially, the seed VM is installed first, and that's the, that's the most minimal version of OpenStack that can be possibly installed. The seed then instantiates the undercloud. The undercloud then is able to create the overcloud. Now, the undercloud is a single node. The overcloud are multiple nodes. So when the overcloud is instantiated, that allows you to then be able to host. Okay? You can use that. Uh, to be able to uh, manage your cloud and to be able to instantiate on that cloud. Swift, uh, which is your object storage, uh, is also available and, it, and is uh, instantiated as part of the undercloud. Okay? It's set up and, and pushed out as part of the undercloud. Now, at the moment, uh, with our... Hello? Uh, so, at the moment... I think I've lost my microphone. So at the moment, uh, you, can, you can instantiate about 30, 30 nodes. Okay? Now, in, how does it really help you to be able to do the install? Well, if you have an old laptop lying around like I did with about, with about I don't know, say 40, around about 40, 40, 48 gig of RAM, you can go and in, install Ubuntu 1404 um, on it. And you can then go and install OpenStack community version. So the HP Helion OpenStack community version, which uses triple O. And you can install it roughly in about 40 minutes. Okay? So you can have your own version of OpenStack. You can play with it, the community version. Uh, it's great for POC work and things like that. And you can have the whole thing up and installed in 40 minutes. Uh, so if you don't believe me, you can go and jump onto YouTube, Google my name with uh, HP Helion OpenStack community and you'll see a time-elapsed video there showing it can be done and there's also a lot of other developers who put some tips and tricks uh, onto that particular page as well. So hopefully that'll help you but in more, more, more to the point, hopefully it'll encourage you to go out there and have a go at installing it yourself and see number one how easy it is and hopefully it'll also start, start to make you think more about okay infrastructure as a platform is quite simple now how can I take the next step and start utilizing and consuming platform as a service? Okay? Platform as a service is really where we want to move towards. Platform as a service allows us to be able to start utilizing and uh, leveraging DevOps methodologies. 
So it's probably a good segue now for me to move across uh, into that particular section. I'm going to cover off a bit about Agile, Lean, some DevOps, uh, and tie, hopefully tie it in for you quickly uh, with Scrum and Safe. Okay, so for those of you who are not familiar with Safe, I'll go through that. It's a scaled Agile framework uh, by Dean Leffingwell. But what I, want to, what I want to bring to your attention at the moment is that you've all, you've all been in the IT industry for quite some time now, and it's changing. Okay? There's essentially two faces of IT now. On the left-hand side, you've got the long tail of traditional infrastructure which needs to be managed. And we need to think about and find and identify easier ways to be able to manage that going forward. On the right-hand side, we have the new product-driven, feature-driven, agile, DevOps-driven, time-to-market side, where we have product owners who are trying to get online digital applications out into the marketplace faster, quicker, and, they, and to beat their competitors. Okay? We have, uh, I know, for, ex for example, in, in Australia, we have telcos that are now trying to, to compete against small startup organizations of only 20 or 30 people. And how are those small startup mentality organizations competing against giant telcos? Well, they're competing because they're utilizing fast time to market which enables them to be able to get products out so quickly that they can beat the large, slow, monolithic telcos. It's really, really important that you start to think about that mindset. Time to market is key. If you're not going to get it out next week, your competitor could be. So how do we start to change that mindset? Well, we start to try and change that mindset by bringing together all of the different groups within our organization. It's not just about IT anymore. It's also about bringing our business closer. It's about making sure that our senior leadership team understand the concept of pets and cattle, or as Rajiv uh, put it, uh, paper plates and fine china. Okay? With, with the mentality of having a meal and using paper plates, when you're finished, there's no washing up. You just throw it in the bin. It's disposable. With fine china, you have to be really careful when you're using it. And you need to make sure that at the end of it, you wash it, you dry it, you polish it, and you put it back in the cupboard ready for, for next time. On the left-hand side is a legacy model that we used to use. Okay? Our applications were built for 99.9% .9 availability. And we put a lot of pressure, and I'm an application developer, so I'm guilty of this in the past. We put a lot of pressure on our infrastructure friends to make sure that our infrastructure was up 99.9999% of the time, so the five nines. But the application world is changing now. There's a responsibility shift, as that arrow shows. That responsibility shift now puts that shift back onto the application developer's side. We need to make sure that we're building our applications to be 99.99999% available that have the ability to utilize things like the HP Helion developer platform built on Cloud Foundry and Docker to be able to elastically move our application workloads around. We need to be thinking about that in terms of cheaper infrastructure. Infrastructure is extremely expensive at the best of times, but we need to be able to use these types of models to make sure that we're driving infrastructure costs down and we're pushing our applications out faster. Gone are the days when a developer would go and ask, put a request in to the operations group for a server that they need. And that request would then have to wait for either hardware or them to be told that there's availability on the virtualization system to be able to stand that up. They then need to go and install and set up the operating system. They'd have to install the software. They'd have to set up monitoring. They'd have to deploy whatever it was, whether it's the website or whether it was uh, the three-tier application, the databases. They'd need to manually run a set of uh, checks and manually run uh, a load balancer check 
And that wasn't even to get it into production. That was usually for a dev or ST environment. On the right-hand side, we have the newer world where application developers are working really closely with our operations group and also the business to make sure that we're making feature changes that the business wants and we're able to push them out into production environments within weeks and days, not months, not years. So realistically, what you want is you want to move to a model where you have all different types of personas that are able to utilize your cloud environments. So you have, you, you have and you usually start with the product owners. Okay? The product owners come from the business and they're driving the different features or the changes that your organization wants to deliver out to its end customers. Those important changes are usually fed through to your development teams, okay? your agile development teams. Those teams want to be able to utilize private clouds, public clouds, or vendor virtual private clouds. It doesn't really matter where they want to be able to take that compute from. But what they want to be able to do is to be able to stand up those environments quickly and within minutes to hours, okay? not weeks to months. And when you can do things like that, you can attach it to your code repositories and you can pull the code out of those code repositories and instantiate the infrastructure that it needs to stand on and deploy the application working software as well. You have a single recipe to be able to push those applications out ready for your test specialists to be able to run automated test cases on. The testers these days are no longer manual anymore. Testers are very similar to, develop to developers. In fact, most testers that I speak to today in an, in an agile world are developers in their own right. And they're excellent developers too. There's a lot of different development languages out there that you can use for testing. And what you want to be able to do is get to that stage where you have a substantial amount of automated test coverage on that particular platform so that you can push out a dev environment, you can push out a system test environment, and all of the testing is done in an automated fashion. You can utilize tools like HP Helion's OpenStack, our developer platform, and our cloud system platform as well to be able to create those automated environments. Those automated environments are really key to you being able to do that fast turnaround time to market that your business product owners are looking for. When you start to couple that with agile development techniques, so you're using small, lean teams made up of developers and test specialists with embedded or injected product owners from the business so that the team is holistic you give them every chance to be able to, to deliver. The operations teams are embedded within the development team. Why? Because in our new world of IT, infrastructure is not being held accountable for 99.9999% availability. Applications are being held for that accountability now. We don't mind so much if our infrastructure is not as robust as it once was, because we know that it can automatically instantiate and elastically stand up more environments as they're needed on demand. I've worked with many companies around the world now that are utilizing small environments like this to be able to do their dev test, user acceptance test environments. And then on the weekend, they tear the whole thing down, back it up and create one massive monolithic environment for stress and volume testing. And they pummel that stress and volume environment for 48 hours over the weekend to capture all of the information and then the logs that they need and the garbage collection information. And then on Sunday afternoon, they send and email all that information out to the teams, pull that stress and volume environment back down again, 
and then create all of the development environments and the system test environments ready for work on Monday. And they go back through that cycle again. It gives you a lot more flexibility. There's no longer that question anymore of being able to, is it, do we do this project or this project or this feature or this feature? You can do both of them now. Feature toggling, so back into the code repository here, feature toggling allows you to be able to touch the same versions of the, of the, of the trunk using intelligent branch toggling. There's ways that you can work on multiple versions of the code by touching the same areas. And utilizing these types of solutions allows you to be able to test them and integrate them faster than ever before. So how do we fit within the Scaled Agile framework? Hands up those who've seen Dean Leffingwell's Scaled Agile framework. Okay, so go on to scaledagileframework.com and have a, bit, have a read about this particular methodology. But it's a fantastic framework for any organizations that are thinking of taking that agile leap and utilizing platform as a service. Okay, if you do have a strong understanding at the moment of infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and you've already started to dabble with things like the Helium development platform uh, or, and or OpenStack, then you want to start to move across from just technical practices and move into the cultural aspects of it. The cultural aspect is probably 50% of DevOps. The other 50% are the technical practices that go along with it, like continuous integration, continuous deployment. The way that we're able to tie in here is to be able to utilize infrastructure as a service for the developers and the testers to be able to stand up environments on demand when they need it. You also have the ability for a systems team to be able to manage that environment and create more automation. When you're able to do that and to be able to repeatably do it in an automated fashion, that's when you've got to the level of scaled agile framework automation that you need to. Uh, unfortunately, today I've only got 30 minutes to cover off all of these topics. So, but if you have more questions about it, please come and see me. And just to finish up, I'm going to st start talking more about um, the platform as a service environment. So the platform as a service environment, which is the HP Helion developer platform, or some people call it the ALS, it sits on top of our, of our Helion OpenStack environment. The great part about this is it allows you to be able to develop new age applications that sit on top of Docker pools or containers and to be able to create applications as droplets and be able to move those applications around at will. It has both a GUI, which I'm showing up here on the, on the screen, and it also has APIs. APIs are really important for the developers, especially from my perspective, because I'm not really a big fan of GUIs, but I am a big fan of utilizing APIs. You'll be able to create your applications as automated transactional instances that can be pushed out into the environments that you want on demand. And that allows your product owners from your business to be able to create those different environments, all from the same piece of operational code, but with different flavors. And in terms of flavors, that means sizes. So you can create small ones for development, larger ones for user acceptance testing, and full-blown production or staging environments as you need. It's all 100% controllable by yourself. You also have the ability to elastically control that environment and to be able to stand up more instances when you require as load increases. Unfortunately, I've only got 30 minutes today to talk to you about this, but if you've got questions, come and see me. I'm here today and tomorrow, and I hope you found this interesting. Agile is a fantastic way to do development and it fits in beautifully with HP's Helion and development platform. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. No. Okay. With, with the mentality of having a meal and using paper plates, when you're finished, there's no washing up. You just throw it in the bin. It's disposable.
With fine china, you have to be really careful when you're using it, and you need to make sure that at the end of it, you wash it, you dry it, you polish it, and you put it back in the cupboard ready for, for next time. On the left-hand side is a legacy model that we used to use. Okay? Our applications were built for 99.9% .9 availability. And we put a lot of pressure, and I'm an application developer, so I'm guilty of this in the past. We put a lot of pressure on our infrastructure friends to make sure that our infrastructure was up 99.9999% of the time, so the five nines. But the application world is changing now. There's a responsibility shift, as that arrow shows. That responsibility shift now puts that shift back onto the application developer's side. We need to make sure that we're building our applications to be 99.99999% available, that have the ability to utilize things like the HP Helion developer platform built on Cloud Foundry and Docker to be able to elastically move our application workloads around. We need to be thinking about that in terms of cheaper infrastructure. Infrastructure is extremely expensive at the best of times, but we need to be able to use these types of models to make sure that we're driving infrastructure costs down and we're pushing our applications out faster. Gone are the days when a developer would go and ask, put a request in to the operations group for a server that they need. And that request would then have to wait for either hardware or them to be told that there's availability on the virtualization system to be able to stand that up. They'd then need to go and install and set up the operating system. They'd have to install the software. They'd have to set up monitoring. They'd have to deploy whatever it was, whether it's the website or whether it was um, the three-tier application, the databases. They'd need to manually run a set of uh, checks and manually run uh, a load balancer check. And that wasn't even to get it into production. That was usually for a dev or ST environment. On the right-hand side, we have the newer world where application developers are working really closely with our operations group and also the business to make sure that we're making feature changes that the business wants and we're able to push them out into production environments within weeks and days, not months, not years. So realistically, what you want is you want to move to a model where you have all different types of personas that are able to utilize your cloud environments. So you have, you, you have and you usually start with the product owners. Okay? The product owners come from the business, and they're driving the different features or the changes that your organization wants to deliver out to its end customers. Those important changes are usually fed through to your development teams, okay? your agile development teams. Those teams want to be able to utilize private clouds, public clouds, or vendor virtual private clouds. It doesn't really matter where they want to be able to take that compute from, but what they want to be able to do is to be able to stand up those environments quickly and within minutes to hours, okay? not weeks to months. And when you can do things like that, you can attach it to your code repositories, and you can pull the code out of those code repositories and instantiate the infrastructure that it needs to stand on and deploy the application working software as well. You have a single recipe to be able to push those applications out ready for your test specialists to be able to run automated test cases on. The testers these days are no longer manual anymore. Testers are very similar to, develop to developers. In fact, most testers that I speak to today in an, in an agile world are developers in their own right, and they're excellent developers too. There's a lot of different development languages out there that you can use for testing. And what you want to be able to do is get to that stage where you have a substantial amount of automated test coverage 
on that particular platform so that you can push out a dev environment, you can push out a system test environment, and all of the testing is done in an automated fashion. You can utilize tools like HP Helion's OpenStack, our developer platform, and our cloud system platform as well to be able to create those automated environments. Those automated environments are really key to you being able to do that fast turnaround time to market that your business product owners are looking for. When you start to couple that with agile development techniques, so you're using small lean teams made up of developers and test specialists with embedded or injected product owners from the business so that the team is holistic you give them every chance to be able to, to deliver. The operations teams are embedded within the development team. Why? Because in our new world of IT, infrastructure is not being held accountable for 99.9999% availability. Applications are being held for that accountability now. We don't mind so much if our infrastructure is not as robust as it once was because we know that it can automatically instantiate and elastically stand up more environments as they're needed on demand. I've worked with many companies around the world now that are utilizing small environments like this to be able to do their dev test, user acceptance test environments. And then on the weekend, they tear the whole thing down, back it up, and create one massive monolithic environment for stress and volume testing. And they pummel that stress and volume environment for 48 hours over the weekend to capture all of the information and then the logs that they need and the garbage collection information. And then on Sunday afternoon, they send and email all that information out to the teams, pull that stress and volume environment back down again and then create all of the development environments and the system test environments ready for work on Monday. And they go back through that cycle again. It gives you a lot more flexibility. There's no longer that question anymore of being able to, is it, do we do this project or this project or this feature or this feature? You can do both of them now. Feature toggling, so back into the code repository here. Feature toggling allows you to be able to touch the same versions of the, of, the, of the trunk using intelligent branch toggling. There's ways that you can work on multiple versions of the code by touching the same areas. And utilizing these types of solutions allows you to be able to test them and integrate them faster than ever before. So how do we fit within the Scaled Agile framework? Hands up those who've seen Dean Leffingwell's Scaled Agile framework. Okay, so go on to scaledagileframework.com and have a, bit, have a read about this particular methodology. But it's a fantastic framework for any organizations that are thinking of taking that agile leap and utilizing platform as a service. Okay, if you do have a strong understanding at the moment of infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and you've already started to dabble with things like the Helion development platform uh, or, and or OpenStack, then you want to start to move across from just technical practices and move into the cultural aspects of it. The cultural aspect is probably 50% of DevOps. The other 50% are the technical practices that go along with it, like continuous integration, continuous deployment. The way that we're able to tie in here is to be able to utilize infrastructure as a service for the developers and the testers to be able to stand up environments on demand when they need it. You also have the ability for a systems team to be able to manage that environment and create more automation. When you're able to do that and to be able to repeatably do it in an automated fashion, that's when you've got to the level of scaled agile framework automation that you need to. Uh, unfortunately, today I've only got 30 minutes to cover off all of these topics. So, but if you have more questions about it, please come and see me. And just to finish up, I'm going to start, start talking more about um, the platform as a service environment. 
So the platform as a service environment, which is the HP Helion developer platform, or some people call it the ALS, it sits on top of our, of our Helion OpenStack environment. The great part about this is it allows you to be able to develop new age applications that sit on top of Docker pools or containers and to be able to create applications as droplets and be able to move those applications around at will. It has both a GUI, which I'm showing up here on the, on the screen, and it also has APIs. APIs are really important for the developers, especially from my perspective, because I'm not really a big fan of GUIs, but I am a big fan of utilizing APIs. You'll be able to create your applications as automated transactional instances that can be pushed out into the environments that you want on demand. And that allows your product owners from your business to be able to create those different environments all from the same piece of operational code but with different flavors. And in terms of flavors, that means sizes. So you can create small ones for development, larger ones for user acceptance testing, and full-blown production or staging environments as you need. It's all 100% controllable by yourself. You also have the ability to elastically control that environment and to be able to stand up more instances when you require as load increases. Unfortunately, I've only got 30 minutes today to talk to you about this, but if you've got questions, come and see me. I'm here today and tomorrow, and I hope you found this interesting. Agile is a fantastic way to do development and it fits in beautifully with HP's Helion and development platform. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you very much for your time, everyone.